would you perform surgery or recommend surgery in this individual? He's got severe aortic regurgitation. Let's just look at the ventricle. Radial function looks quite okay. And if you calculate ejection fraction, it's quite normal too. Here is his aortic regurgitation. You see it's a very eccentric jet where you would probably underestimate the severity of aortic regurgitation. And this is his strain. It's minus 17.6. And then if you look, you see that there is already some form of deterioration of strain here at the base. What does that mean? Well, it's below normal, but we have a normal ejection fraction. I would say at present it's a gray zone. Next case. How is ejection fraction in this patient? Again, significant aortic regurgitation. The ventricle is small. Uh, it does look as if it maybe is borderline. And if you look at the ejection fraction, we get 51, but it's still above the cutoff value. And this is his strain. It's 14.2. It's a lot less than the previous patient has. And it is definitely discrepant actually to the ejection fraction. Again, you see that there is a reduction of strain here more at the base than at the apex. And finally, here's a patient where we definitely have a reduction in ejection fraction. You see that the patient has very poor left ventricle function and he has significant aortic regurgitation. You can see that there's also a pleural effusion here. So this is a patient who was definitely symptomatic. But the key point here is that you have a patient with very, very low strain of minus 5.4. And if we put all this together and compare these different patients, I think it very nicely shows that we see a gradual decrease in strain values in patients with aortic regurgitation if their left ventricle function starts to deteriorate. So yes, speckle tracking mirrors ejection fraction. In this case, of course, the patient was symptomatic, but these patients all were actually asymptomatic. What does that mean? Well, let me go back to the literature and take a look at what has actually been published or what other research groups have actually shown. Let me show you a study that was published in the Jack Imaging Journal in 2017 where the authors concluded that in asymptomatic patients with chronic grade 3 plus aortic regurgitation and preserved ejection fraction, the worsening of the longitudinal strain was associated with long-term mortality it provided incremental prognostic value and improved reclassification. Let's take a look at this study in more detail. It's a large study. So there was over 1,000 patients that were included and a very well distribution between males and females, a little bit more males than females. When you looked at these patients, many patients were actually or actually received aortic valve replacement or aortic valve surgery. If you classify the patients depending on whether or not their global longitudinal strain was good or bad, then we see that those patients who have a bad longitudinal strain, in this case they used a cutoff value of minus 19%, opposed to those had, who had a strain above 19%, that the patients with the bad strain had a worse prognosis, 17% of deaths opposed to 11% of deaths. So it again shows you the value of longitudinal strain in predicting the outcome of these patients. But what if we apply this cutoff value to the patients I showed you previously? It would mean that all of these patients here would require cardiovascular surgery. So should we use a simple cutoff value? I do not believe this is good. Why? First of all, we've got very large differences between vendors. And second of all, at this point, we don't even have normal values. And it's even more difficult if you want to find the cutoff value in aortic regurgitation. Here is a study that shows you the mean value of global longitudinal strain in patients with preserved ejection fraction and chronic aortic regurgitation. Look how low it is, much lower than the minus 19 we saw in the previous study. Of course, it's higher than patients who have reduction ejection fraction and definitely lower than normals, but this does not tell us where the cutoff value should be. Here is another study. They used a cutoff value of minus 12.5. Definitely patients who have a value below minus 12.5 have a very poor prognosis, both if they are not operated or if they are operated. But this still might not be the optimal cutoff value. So, I think we would probably need to use not an absolute value of strain, but more the change of strain over time. 
very similar to what is actually used in cardio-oncology, where we try to see if the strain is less, more than 15% from one exam to the other, demonstrating that there is cardiotoxicity. And this is something that we probably need to look at in more detail in the future.